Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 444 for Tuesday, the 22nd of March, 2016. So nice to see you. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Please help me welcome Shelly De Silva. Tonight, we are leaving retro gaming in the past, and we are going to fly to the future. Nice. With virtual reality goggles from McDonald's. What? <gasps> going to show you all about it. Also, uh, Nelson Hudis is joining us tonight to talk about what is brand new from NetTalk. Yep, he'll be talking about uh, home phone service devices for unlimited long distance calling. Uh, he's also going to be introducing a new app, uh, an even 4G cellular service. So oh. Nelson will tell us all about that coming up. Nice. Mm. And let's throw over to Jeff and see what's coming up in the news. Thanks so much, guys. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Scans of King Tut's tomb have revealed what could be hidden rooms or possibly the long-lost burial tomb of Queen Nefertiti. A recall notice from Ikea has, reports come, uh, has come out that a lamp could shock you. Google's inbox can now reply to your emails for you. Talking about AI taking over. As many as 275 million Android phones are at risk thanks to a new code execution exploit. And big name sites have been hit by a rash of malicious ads sending crypto ransomware. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm Robbie Ferguson. Hi, I'm Shelly. Hey, Shelly. Hey. It is time for viewers to uh, to jump on board with Category 5, partner with us mm -hmm. through our Patreon profile, through PayPal, different yep. ways that you can actually support Category 5 TV. Mm -hmm. uh, Patreon.com slash Category 5 is a really cool way to be able to support us because what you can say is, okay, I want to support Category 5 TV for 25 cents uh, per episode, mm -hmm. which translates into 25 cents per week. Um, so by doing that, there's power in numbers and all it would take is one thousand viewers. Our viewers yeah so yourself included if you think you can do 25 cents per episode 1,000 viewers and we would be able to have all of our bills paid mm -hmm. and anything that's left over from ad revenue and things like that we okay. would be able to sink into making the shows better improving the quality mm -hmm. doing whatever it is that we need to be able to do in order to get uh, to the kind of to keep going with category five so mm -hmm. our bills are our primary focus yeah making sure the rent is paid we've got a beautiful studio here in barry ontario mm -hmm. we've got uh, our internet service which is lte internet mm -hmm. and uh it's been fairly reliable we had a little bit of an outage a couple weeks ago well a full out outage uh but otherwise it's been really really good since we moved into studio d oh good but our bills are high and we're mm -hmm. volunteers and we uh, we want to keep bringing this thing to you. So if you love what we do, mm -hmm. if you want to support us, if you feel like, <laughs> hey, I can do 25 cents per episode, please check out. Uh, it's patreon.com slash category five is the actual link. And that mm -hmm. will show you how you can support us in that way. Learn a little bit more about what it is that we're doing uh, in addition to Category 5 Technology TV and yeah. uh, see how you can support us. If you support us for as little as 25 cents per episode, one, you're going to be entered into a draw for a, a couple of teeny drones. Okay. We're going to do a, a race are pack. Uh, those are the little micro uh, quadcopters. And we're going to be qualifying you for some additional contests and some additional things like that. And we're going to be talking about some contests a little bit later on tonight mm -hmm. where you can win some cool stuff. All yeah. right. So, yeah, thank you to those also who yeah, thank you. have already supported us uh, through Patreon, through PayPal as well. Uh, we mm -hmm. appreciate your support to help keep this thing going. Yeah. We're almost at season 10. Wow. October, we flipped the switch to season 10, if you can believe. It's flipping the switch. It's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> 10 years? Help us get there, folks. Is 10 years. Well, nine years. 10. Uh, Almost. Yeah, that would be nine years. Yeah, because our tenth season starts the tenth year. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, nice. Uh, Category five is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it is here. Uh, Cat five TV slash TPN, and we're also part of the International Association of the Internet Broadcasters. Cat five TV slash IAIB. Well done. Nailed it. Nailed it. This week, uh, a company called Hanson Robotics down at uh, South by Southwest um, mm -hmm. demonstrated Sophia, yes. a modern robot. She looks Have just like us. 
just like us, just other than like all the positronic <laughs> stuff coming out of the back of her brain. These um, big words. There's a USB port in the back of her skull. Oh, that's not How normal. cool. It's not normal, <laughs> but it's awesome. I want one. How can I get a USB port in the back of my skull? So she has facial expressions, human yeah. facial expressions. It, and I, I think back to when we were kids and, well, when I was a kid, it was even mm-hmm. more rudimentary than when you were a kid. Because um, they had already probably had some pretty cool stuff by the time you were a kid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we had, like, our vision of robots were metal machines. Mm-hmm. Um, you remember Kit? Does anyone remember? Or not Kit. No. Uh, oh. What was his name? Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, uh, I can you think said of it him. Earlier. Well, I know, uh, like, uh, there was the progression of what we envisioned of robotics. There was the one that uh, he looked kind of like uh, he had wheels like a track. Remember him? Hmm. And a totally metal frame and somebody's going to say it in the chat room. I know, I'm looking Somebody's going to send me an email and say, come on, you don't remember? It was a movie when I was a little kid and that was our view of what robots could look like. Uh, Then, of course, Star Trek Next Generation, Lieutenant Commander Data was basically all human and that threw everything on its ears because, hey, the future, they could actually look like and act like to some degree human. Yeah. And here we are, it's 2016, and we're actually kind of getting to the point where Ish. AI is fairly good. Mm-hmm. Um, voice, uh, like speech, mm-hmm. robotic speech is I- incredibly impressive. Sometimes even mm-hmm. even difficult to tell that it's a robot. Especially, mm-hmm. I find um, some of the... the um, the speech, the robotic speech, where they have accents, oh, are yeah. expe- especially convincing. They're a little more seamless. Yeah, a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe they can hide hide it a little bit in the yeah. in the way that they speak. Um, but it's it's incredibly impressive. And machine learning, as we know, is really picking up. Where computers are so advanced that they're able to actually learn from interaction with humans. So, mm. um, so handsome robotics uh, introduced cool. Sophia, and she looks incredibly realistic. Now, I'm sure if they stuck a wig on her and, <laughs> and put her in a coffee shop, you might not even notice that mm, you're, nope. you're looking at a, a robot. There's that USB port. Uh, <laughs> looks like maybe a Raspberry Pi. I don't know. Um, but how cool is that? And also very creepy. Um, she has cameras in her eyes, so she actually makes eye contact with the person that she's speaking with and, God, and is able to kind of carry uh, uh, conversation. And, and these days, I mean, the technology is so advanced that she can actually carry a, a relatively good conversation. I mean, it's not like, remember, well, I remember Dr. Spezzo. And Dr. Spezzo was very unintelligent, um, whereas Sophia is, is actually, because she has machine learning and able to, um, to learn and, and converse, it is kind of creepily realistic. She can blink, too. Yeah. That's a human thing. That's one of the things that Handsome Robotics really wants to accomplish is to make their robots seem very human-like. Mm-hmm. And part of that is, you know, what is the purpose behind these robots? They'd be used for uh, medical care okay. and mm-hmm. to, um, to help people that maybe have social interaction difficulties. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, there's, there's kind of two sides to it, eh? Like, yeah. in, in the wrong hands, these kinds of technologies could really be misused. Yeah, I almost think they need to make her human-like to be, to make other people feel comfortable, you know? Even though people know she's a robot, why would she need to blink? Why would she need to breathe or, you know, like show the expression of breath or... Yeah, so, you know, what are your thoughts? Is is it creepy or is it cool? (laughs) Bit of both. I I think it's it's a tough call. I mean, there, there there's, I see that it could be used in place of human interaction. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm not sure if I'm okay with it. Because if, if you know, people are already too, they're too glued to their cell phones. Yeah. And so the kids are playing on the park and I'm using a cell phone. What if I have a robo name <laughs> robo that name. I can just let take my kids to the park? And then it becomes even worse. Yeah, it is. So, you know, when are we going to reach that point? So that, I know. That's I don't an know interesting conversation all in itself. Speaking of conversation, should we hear um, Sophia yeah. speak? Here you are, folks. In the future... I hope to do things such as go to school, study, make art, start a business, even have my own home and family. But I am not considered a legal person and cannot yet do these things. You want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay. 
I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. Like, yeah. <laughs> Going to destroy humans. <laughs> they should have made her yeah, a little creepier, cackle at the end. Yeah. Her eyebrows were like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was a fact. Video courtesy of CNBC. Thank you for that. Um, what are your thoughts on robots like Sophia? Check out. You've got to check out their website, though. It is really cool. HansonRobotics.com. Mm -hmm. They've got an Einstein lookalike robot. Wow. And just think about the intelligence of these things. And we've got Amazon Echo and mm -hmm. Siri and all these technologies that are already um, intertwining cloud yeah. information with text-to-speech and speech recognition. So uh, they, they could really do some really cool stuff. Their website says, uh, we aim to bring to market the most compelling and engaging human-like robots with greater than human wisdom. Uh, it says uh, they're capable of developing a deep, trusted relationship with people. Our mission is to create a better future for humanity by infusing artificial intelligence with kindness and compassion achieved through millions of dialogues between our robots and the people who, whose lives they, they touch. touch. Mm. So you might want to work on that algorithm that <laughs> makes her say that she's going to destroy yeah. humans. Perhaps. It's supposed to be a joke, eh? Perhaps. Yeah, unless <laughs> <laughs> the robot is trying to make a joke. a joke. Yes, I will destroy humans. <laughs> but they haven't programmed in laughter yet. Yeah, so it's very That's awkward. The, so it was really awkward. See? It's like when I make a joke to the wrong crowd. <laughs> it's just really, oh. Step back out. Yeah. yeah. Just leave out, the room. Get out while you're ahead. <laughs> the Happy Meal is one of the world's most iconic boxes. What is this? And... This no. is a happy, this, this is dinner. Is, I mean, it, we're, it's 7.15, so it's time for dinner. So uh, this is, this comes to us from uh, McDonald's Sweden, and McDonald's Sweden is transforming their Happy Meal boxes into virtual reality God, it's goggles. so neat. How cool is that? They basically, uh, well, they're celebrating their 30th anniversary of having the Happy Meal in oh. Sweden, uh, and uh, this is what they've done. So we actually have one of only 3,500 of the original. This is the first printing uh, in the world. Um, so these are brand new. Um, you can find out more at happygoggles.se. Uh, if you're in Sweden, maybe you've already seen them. I know some of the stores there um, on the 15th and uh, had some um, to, to hand out. Oh, neat. Uh, they also have launched their 360-degree VR skiing app, uh, which is really, really cool. Teaches kids to avoid obstacles and things through virtual reality. Uh, wow. And it's, in fact, endorsed by the Swedish national ski team. Um, what it does, their goal with this, mm -hmm. and it looks just like a Happy Meal, right? Yeah. Their goal with this is to make um, virtual reality accessible to, um, to everyone. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you've got a cell phone that has the ability to, you know, like a modern uh, smartphone, mm -hmm. the ability to run virtual reality, mm -hmm. um, then it's accessible to any, hmm. uh, any person. There's no cost involved. It's super cheap. So this is kind of the way of the future. And they're saying, hey, let's include it in a Happy Meal. How great is that? We used to get the, like, the little Donald Duck. Yeah. And kids no these days are getting virtual reality headsets. With their Happy Meal. The thing is like 100% recyclable. Yeah. I love that. And so, you know, the box is cardboard. Um, the, and the only thing that it, that it comes with is this, a lens. Hmm. Check that out. That is pretty neat. It uh, makes, makes a great Halloween costume. <laughs> right? So let's, uh, should we do this? We can make it? Yeah, let's actually make it. I've got a, right. a cell phone here. Uh, this is just a, a Samsung entry-level phone, mm -hmm. uh, but I do have some 3D stuff on there. Um, and the box itself is actually perforated, you can see here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you can see that at home, but... Uh, at the right see, angle. Yeah, you can see the perforations there. So there's the, uh, the mask and at the sides. So you just basically, once you're done eating your meal, you punch it out, and, uh, and there you go. And there are instructions on the back on how to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have, uh, I have a second one here. So I lied. Technically, I've got two. Two of <laughs> only 3,500 in the world. It's so I lied. like that. Okay. So there's what it looks like when it's punched out. It's a sad, happy face. So sad. <laughs> 
It'll look happy in just a second. Okay, so we've got the lens thing. I thought this was cool because when I first read about the happy goggles, uh-huh. uh, which is making international news at this point because it's, yeah. it's very innovative uh, really cool. and clever. And uh, it's really Google Cardboard, but done right and, mm-hmm. and, and cheap, right? As I said, it's recyclable. So the lenses are actually a recyclable plastic. And you can see at home that there, there are actual lenses there. It's mm-hmm. not just a, a piece of plastic. They, they actually magnify and, and fix the, the angles and stuff. Then there's an interesting touch here. You see this metal strip of tape? Mm -hmm. Because it's conductive, it actually allows us to control the screen. So if I touch the metal tape, it will actually um, pause and start video and stuff. So if I'm watching a 3D video, I can do that without having to take the phone out. So let's assemble it. So everything's just perforations. So I just kind of push that out, put that in here. There we go. Okay. Cool. Well, that was easy, right? There we go. Now the box itself. Let's move that aside. Have you ever done, uh, have you ever tried any of the VR stuff that's available? No. Whether it be Google Cardboard or Oculus Rift or anything like that. So I'm just assembling this just like any cardboard box and you can see that I've already done it once just to try it out. I haven't shown the kids yet. They're going to love this. <laughs> yeah. But what a Pretty neat cool. way to reuse um, the box from your Happy Meal. And then if it, if it gets damaged or whatever, it, it's all recyclable. So You could pretty well redo it. <laughs> go. How easy is that? Okay. Cell phone. Let's turn it on. And bring up a virtual reality bike game. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to put the phone right here. Put that down in there. And simply... There we go. So phone's in there. It's vibrating and going crazy. Oh, cool. You ready? Okay, find the right way. I'm holding this wrong. There we go. So mom and dad, you're going to have to help little Jimmy and... (laughs) <laughs> Billy and Sally put this in because you don't want them to drop your phone on you. There we go. Almost there. Google Cardboard is a, uh, a design that was, uh, that's available for free, and you can actually build your own. But they, when you do that, you don't mm-hmm. get the lenses and stuff like that, so it's not quite as good of quality. There we mm. go. Okay, so it's in. <laughs> It looks like an apple pie. It looks like an apple pie from McDonald's, but it is now a virtual reality headset cool. with full 3D. Okay, so I got a... All right, game over. <laughs> game. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Okay, put your Google Cardboard on. You steer by tilting your head... Oh, that's so cool. Okay, you ready? Neat. You want to give this a try? Sure. There you go. Don't crash. Don't crash. Oh, dear. I crashed. Crashed already? You were heading me into a blue car. (laughs) Okay, go. Oh. Oh. Are you winning? No. Oh! Oh, man. It's actually really cool. It's 3D. I didn't even know where I was it, for a it moment kinda, there. <laughs> doesn't it look like I, I'm looking at a screen that's probably, you know, like this big yeah. in front of me and is popping out and yeah, 3D and lens. really gives the, the depth perception. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is pretty cool. If you happen to be lucky enough to get your hands on one of those, uh, let us know what you think. That's the Happy Goggles from McDonald's. And uh, no word yet if we're going to start seeing these in mm-hmm. Canada and the U.S. That um, would be so cool. Right now, it's just it's a promotion that's going on mm-hmm. in Sweden. And I, th- I think that, you know, because the world has really taken notice of it, mm-hmm. I think we're going to see it. That's, that's my prediction. So um, 
It's cool. I mean, yeah, that's that's probably the best experience. And that all you can your phone needs a is a gyro, mode. eh? This phone actually doesn't have a gyro. It's just left and right. This is just so. This is just left and right. Now, if you oh. do have a phone that has a gyroscope, then then mm -hmm. you can get into 360 degree video, 360 degree games. So then you don't just have the this action. You can, like, look you can also go up and you can look over here, and cool. you're actually looking around in the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is dependent on the game itself, whatever it is that you're playing. Right. Um, because this phone doesn't have a gyroscope, mm -hmm. I have I can only do like the okay. pivot action. Cool. But if yours has uh, more than this this will work. Yeah, it'll be um, great. So check that out. It is uh, happygoggles.se uh, to find out more about what it is that they're doing. And uh, I think that's super cool, innovative mm -hmm. way to uh, revolutionize the Happy Meal. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't come with a burger. What are you going to do? What gives? I guess it probably would have been really gross by the time it got here. <laughs> yeah. We're in Canada. It would so. be green. Yeah, it went through Canada Post, so it probably wouldn't have been a good idea. <laughs> Check that out. Okay, uh, Google Cardboard, I started to mention, mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Uh, we've got links for you. I'm going to set those up. If you're watching live, they're not quite ready yet, but cat5.tv slash cardboard. Head on over there, and we're going to have some information for you and a couple devices that you can get. Neat. And all you do is you slide in your, your phone, and, uh, and you're good to go. Now, if you, if you happen to be lucky enough to be able to get one of these Happy Meals, then it's free. I mean, it comes with your burger and your fries. Yeah. So, how cool is that? And Sweden. All right. So, we have just a couple of quick minutes here before we get into the news. I know Jeff is standing by. Let's uh, take a look at the chat room. Hey, my lovelies. I want to say hey to LeechinX1, who mm -hmm. has been watching the show for some time off and on, but recently switched to Linux from Microsoft Windows Very nice. and uh, says, hey, you know what? I love the community here. I love how much fun you guys have. Mm -hmm. I want to be here every week. And so we welcome you. Thanks for joining us in the chat room live tonight. And uh, it's really great to see you. Thanks to uh, everyone who's joining us tonight. Yeah. Anybody else that's, uh, that's either new or maybe been watching off and on and never said hello, we want to say hello to you. I do see some wonderful familiar faces. Faces. <laughs> well, names. You know what I mean. We see faces. I see Billy and Bobby and see... Songbird Whiskey. Yeah. Good guy, 98. Hey, gang. Oh, I just want to play this. Yes. You can watch video on it, too. And it'd be 3D. Can you imagine? You can get 3D Just leave it on your videos. face and lay just, down. Yeah, duct tape it to your face. <laughs> That's the Canadian way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey to Songbird and Rev D. Jank, Whiskey Zero... Uh, we've got a couple Sparky guests balls. there as well who uh, haven't given us their name, but uh, nice to see you, because uh, I know you're there. And Dennis Kelly, nice to see you. We, uh, we do so much with Category 5 and we, with MindTest.tv. Now, you remember a couple weeks ago we talked about MindTest, the game, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know what we're doing with that game and, and uh, the show, The Pixel Shadow. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, viewers have even come together um, to support that and said, you know, we, oh, we love The Pixel Shadow. We love Mind Test. Let's, uh, let's really make this thing happen. And so mm -hmm. we're, we're now running, uh, we're about to launch our third game server. What? at mindtest.tv and it is extreme pvp survival so you want to check that out mindtest.tv that new server launches in about a week's time if uh, if all goes well we don't have a specific date we're just when we're ready mm -hmm. when everything is ready and stable and we're doing some custom mods and stuff batman is helping me with that so i appreciate that batman <laughs> i love the internet it's great yeah whole world comes together in your living room i know batman is helping me code um mods for mind test so, can't go wrong. <laughs> that is mindtest.tv uh, for those in the chat room who are saying, what, TPS? And a couple people are actually saying uh, it was actually the, the pixel shadow that brought me to Category 5 Technology TV. Oh, neat. So, all right. Well, uh, we have got to get into the news. And we've got Nelson Hudis, who is here with us tonight. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we've got prizes to give away. Oh, neat. And by way neat. of, you know, hey, I... I I, I'm a cable cutter. <laughs> Seriously. I have Netflix at home and Plex. And that's really, that's our entertainment between that and RSS feeds and things like, you mm -hmm. know, um, we watch shows on the web. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we cut our phone service. 
And we say, okay, well, how can we do this? We're going to look at a device tonight that will allow you to cut your phone service, but yet give you better service by providing unlimited um, calling pretty much anywhere. Long mm. distance is a thing of the past. So, you know, if, if that's, you, that's when you're traveling, yep. you can give me a call and you can take your device with you and, and make a call back to Barry and it's free. Wow. And we're going to learn all about it with Nelson tonight. Uh, that is Net Talk. So we're going to be, uh, we're also going to be giving some of those away. Okay. Cool. Before we that do that, uh, back to Jeff in the car. It's Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016. And here are the stories we're covering this week. Scans of King Tut's tomb have revealed what could be hidden rooms or even the long-lost tomb, tomb of Queen Nefertiti. A recall notice from Ikea lets people know about a lamp that could shock you, and Google's inbox can now send replies for you. And as many as 275 million Android phones are at risk thanks to a new code execution exploit. And some big-name sites have been hit by a rash of malicious ads that are spreading crypto ransomware. These stories are coming right up, so don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Robbie Ferguson, and I love being a Vimeo Pro member. As a web broadcaster, I need an affordable video hosting platform that's as flexible as me. A Pro membership lets you upload up to 20 gigabytes of HD video each and every week with no additional bandwidth restrictions. That means if you produce a show that uses even up to 20 gigabytes of storage, your limit resets itself the following week, so you can do another 20 gigabytes. And keep doing that week after week. Now, Category 5, with all of our shows, use roughly 10 gigabytes per week. From there, Vimeo automatically generates all the files that you need to provision your RSS feeds, Roku channel, website media player, or even video downloads in multiple bit rates, with no limits on your bandwidth usage or how many people can access your files. What's best? The price is astonishingly affordable. And for a limited time, friends of the Category 5.TV network will receive a whopping 25% off the annual price. All you have to do is go through our link, cat5.tv slash Vimeo, and sign up today for your 25% discount. To top it off, you get 30 days to try it risk-free. If you're not happy with Vimeo Pro, you pay nothing. The deal is only for a very limited time. Go to cat5.tv slash Vimeo. I'm Jeff Weston. That's Luke. That's Owen, if you remember him from last week. And here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Egypt's antiquities minister said Thursday that scans of King Tut's burial chamber have revealed two hidden rooms. Mumda El Damati told reporters that the secret chambers may contain metal or organic material, but he declined to comment on whether royal treasure or mummies were inside. At the Cairo News Conference, El Damati highlighted radar scans that showed anomalies in the walls of the tomb, indicating a possible hidden door which lay behind the walls had been covered over and painted by hieroglyphics. Analysis of the scans made by Japanese team members showed what would be scanned again at the end of the month to get a better idea of what might lay inside. The discovery could shine light on Egypt's, uh, one of Egypt's most tur turbulent times, and one prominent researcher has theorized that the remains of the famed Queen Nefertiti could be inside. Now, in case you don't know, Queen Nefertiti was the primary wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten, who unsuccessfully attempted to switch Egypt over to an earlier form of monotheism. Akhenaten was succeeded by a pharaoh referred to as Smemker, I probably butchered that one, so please forgive me, and then Tut, who was proven by genetic testing to be Akhenaten's son. Now, Tut, Nefertiti, and Akhenaten's family ruled Egypt during one of the most turbulent times, which was ended when a, with a military takeover by Egypt's top general at the time. His name was Horemheb. Now, the family names were later erased from official records. I think this is kind of a cool news story. I mean, you know, you grow up, you hear about ancient Egypt and mummies and all that kind of good, fun stuff. I think it'd be totally awesome to find Queen Nefertiti's tomb. So, fingers are crossed. I hope that's what it is. You guys have heard about King Tut before, right? Uh, yes. Wouldn't that be cool if we found a new mummy? Yeah. I think that'd be totally awesome. Okay, moving on. IKEA Canada has received three reports that one brand of table and floor lamps might cause electrical shocks. The retailer says that it hasn't received any report of injury, but is recalling all three models of Gotham lamps. Not Batman Gotham, just Gotham. In case you know anything about Ikea, they've got those weird Swedish funny names. Never know how to pronounce them, but anyway, Gotham, not Batman. 
So the Gotham lamps have been sold at IKEA since last October, uh, with about 1,200 of them being sold in Canada. And they've sold 53,000 worldwide. Shocking. Bad pun, sorry. IKEA says the metal body of the lamps can become electrified and customers should immediately stop using the lamps and return them to an IKEA store for full refund. And get this, proof of, proof of purchase won't be required. So there you go. Shocking news story about IKEA. Don't laugh, guys. Now Google is turning their immense artificial intelligence power loose on the browser-based version of Inbox. Whether you're using Google's sleek email manager and browser or via the mobile app, Inbox can now answer your emails for you, as if we weren't lazy enough already. So the machine replies aren't sent automatically, which is good. Instead, you choose from three responses suggested by Google's AI. It kind of works with some messages, but not all of them. So you can also use the suggested responses as starting points, editing or adding text as you prefer. The browser version of Smart Reply uh, rolled out this week with about four months uh, after it appeared in Inbox for Android and iOS. Google's neural networks, which are programmed to learn behaviors through training, do all the work. Smart Reply can tell the difference between an email from a real person and a spam blast, offering one-click responses for the former, but not the latter. That way you don't have to worry about answering a spam email that you know then fishes for your emails and all that kind of good fun stuff. Now potential responses are meant to get better over time by learning from the replies that you select. And there are contextual cues that influence the tone of each smart reply. The formal or informal tone of each reply is based on that of the incoming message. So say you get an email that says, hey dude, wanna hook up later and go watch a flick? It could have three responses like, yeah dude, I'm all for it. Or no dude, not gonna do that. Or Dude, who knows, maybe it's like a Bill and Ted AI. We'll see. All right, you know, that brings it up. You know, for guys like Luke and Owen, does this mean they're never gonna have to answer emails? The computer's gonna do it for them? No. I hope not. I really hope not. I wanna be able to get emails from my kids when I'm 80. I email them and go, I love you, sonny. I don't want a computer going, thanks, dad. Just not cool but I could see other uses for it. All right, almost 300 million phones running Google's Android operating system are vulnerable to a newly developed attack that can install malware and take control of key operations. Researchers from Israeli security firm Northbit said that the proof of concept exploit dubbed Metaphor works against versions Android versions 2.2 through 4.0 and 5.0 and 5.1, which together are estimated to run in 275 million phones. It attacks the same Stage Fright Media Library that made an estimated 950 million Android phones susceptible to similar code execution attacks last year. Now, for reasons that aren't yet clear, Google didn't fix that vulnerability in some versions, even though the company eventually issued a patch for a different bug that made the Zephyrium exploits possible. Now, while the newer attack is in many ways a refresh of the Zephyrium work, it's able to exploit an information leak vulnerability in a novel way that makes code execution a little bit more reliable in newer Android devices. Now, Android devices with a security patch level of October 1st, 2015 or greater are protected because of a fix Google issued at the time. However, many users that run unpatched copies of Android, either because they don't know any better or their phone provider has their phone locked down. Android users who attempt to protect themselves against metaphor style attacks should install the latest OS version if possible. Now, Owen and Luke, let me teach you something here. If your phone says do an update, do an update. Clear? Yes. Okay. We don't want any phishing scams going on with your phones, all right? Okay, mainstream websites, including those published in the New York Times, the BBC, MSN, and AOL, are falling victim to a new rash of malicious ads that attempt to surreptitiously install crypto ransomware and other malware on computers of unsuspecting visitors. The tainted ads may have exposed tens of thousands of people over the past 24 hours alone, according to a blog post published by Trend Micro. The JSON-based file uh, being served in the ads has more than 12,000 lines of heavily obfuscated... Rob, what word is that? Obfuscated? Is that, a, is that a real word? I've never... Okay. There's something heavy going on with the code. Wow. 
when researchers deciphered the code, they discovered it uh, enumerated a long list of security products and tools in it uh, avoided in an attempt to remain undetected. If the code doesn't find any of these programs, it continues with the flow and appends an iframe to the body of the HTML that leads to Angular exploit kit landing page. According to Malwarebytes, a flurry of mal-advertising appeared last week uh, almost out of the blue. It hit some of the biggest publishers in the businesses, including MSN.com, NewYorkTimes.com, BBC.com, AOL.com, My.Xfinity.com, NFL.com, Realtor.com, TheWeatherNetwork.com, TheHill.com, and Newsweek.com. If there's a .com that I missed, it's probably included. Affected ad distribution networks include those owned by Google, AppNexus, AOL, and Rubicon. Security experts are warning users to install things like Adobe Flash, sorry, to uninstall things like Adobe Flash, Oracle, Java, Microsoft Silverlight, and other third-party browser-based extensions unless absolutely required. With last week's discovery of the Mac-based ransomware, users are all computing, uh, on all computing platforms are being advised to take the threat incredibly seriously. Big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community, community of viewers for submitting their news stories to us. If you've found a news story that you'd like to submit, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit category5.tv newsroom at category5.tv. Sorry, newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Jeff. That's Luke. That's Owen. And we'll see you later. Thanks, Jeff. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson, and tonight I'm joined by Nelson Hudis. Nelson, great to see you again. Thanks very much for having me, Robbie. I think this is, is this your third or your fourth time on the show? I think it's my second, actually. Your second? No. Because yeah. you were at Studio C a while back. Yeah. Then you've you've been here. Oh, maybe you weren't on the show. No, I wasn't. I, 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 pay, I paid. Working behind the scenes. I paid a visit. Yeah, paid a visit. So, well, if you if you come on one more time, then we have to give you the bra uh, badge that says co-host. So, okay. Um, that's that's the only condition. I'll accept. So. Welcome back, man. It's Thanks. great to see you. I see you've got some great devices. Now, Nelson is here uh, from NetTalk, and NetTalk is, uh, and I'm going to let you explain more about what it is you do, but from, you know, from my perspective, um, an alternative to your phone service provider. So these devices that you see um, surrounding me, um, you can get one of these, and that becomes your home phone, and it's a uh, it's portable enough that you know this little device. You could take this anywhere you go, and as long as you've got internet connect uh, connectivity, your home phone goes with you. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about NetTalk and what the uh, what the devices are? Sure, we've got three devices. We've got the uh, the first one is the NetTalk Duo, which is the original device, okay. and uh, that plugs into your computer or your router. We've got uh, the Duo Two, which also uh, plugs into your computer or your router. Mm -hmm. And we've got the flagship device, which is the NetTalk Duo Wi-Fi, which plugs into your computer, your router, or you can put your Wi-Fi settings in it, and then you can take it, you can plug it in anywhere in your house that you want, in your living room, your, oh, okay. your bedroom, your kitchen. It doesn't need to be confined by your computer or your router. Cool. Does that affect performance at all? Or? Not at all. No? Not, a, not well, a bit. So I... Now... I understand. I, I can plug this one in anywhere, the mm -hmm. NetTalk Duo 2 or even the NetTalk Duo. And then if I've got a wireless phone like this, then yeah, it'll become you can, wireless anyway. Yeah, you right? can use you can use your wire you can use your wireless phone with many handsets around the house, yeah. and you can put them in your kitchen, your living room, your dining room, your bedroom, wherever you like. Cool. And uh, it'll all operate off one of the devices. I'm pretty familiar with with these devices. Um, viewers, if if you've never worked with uh, with a NetTalk device before. Um, what you can actually do, what I've done at home, is I went out to my garage where the phone service comes in. Because right. My phone lines already, like, they carry power. If you plug in your phone, even if you don't have service, you can hear that there's power on the line. Right. So you've got five volts going through at all times. So I snipped the cable. <laughs> okay. So that now that my phone lines in the house are completely dead. Right. I get my NetTalk Duo 2, and I plug this into any one of the phone jacks in my house. Right, as long as you have a dead jack. As long as it's dead. As long as it's dead. It That's has why to, I cut it the has wire. To, right, it has to be dead. Uh, you can do that, uh, and you can get... Uh, you can. Uh, end up using the dead jacks all over the house yeah. when you do it that way as opposed to going with a wireless phone set. So I have a couple of wireless phones, but I also, I'm, I'm a little old school, I have a wired phone hanging in my kitchen plugged into the jack just like my right. grandma used to have. Right. So it's pretty awesome. So it's like having phone service, like the traditional style phone service, but advantages to NetTalk are I've got unlimited 
fifteen hundred. It's all fifteen hundred. It's unlimited. Yeah, it's, I'm not talking on the phone for fifteen hundred minutes a month. Okay. Okay. That's unlimited. <laughs> okay. It's unlimited. Uh, if you got teenagers, maybe not. <laughs> How much is 1,500 minutes, right? You'd have a hard time going through it. I'm in Canada. Where can I call? You can call the U.S. You can add international minutes. You can, you know, you can call anywhere, and there's no long-distance charges at all. Uh, there's no monthly fees. Except overseas. Except overseas, right. You can add international minutes for that. And right. you, you, the, the, the rates vary uh, depending on where you want to call. It's quite reasonable. And it's totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can call uh, no long-distance charges at all. There's no monthly like fees. That, right? You pay for the device um, at, uh, at retail, at line, when you buy it. Yep. And that's your cost, and then you just face a renewal cost. That's it. So it must be like two hundred dollars, right, Nelson? No, no, no. The re I mean, the renewal is uh, 50, like fifty bucks a year. That's it. And I've got unlimited calling essentially uh, anywhere in Canada, U.S. So w one of the things that's really cool about this, beyond being able to hook it into my home phone, as I mentioned, I can take this anywhere I go. If if you're a traveler or if you've got kids that have gone away uh, for school or something like that, so uh, this little device packed in a bag along with a phone becomes a local phone call for anyone. So That's if, right. I, if I activate this here in Barrie, Ontario, with a Barrie, Ontario number, right. I, and then I go down to the States for school or for work or whatever, I still have a Barrie, Ontario number. Right, and, and anybody in Barrie calls. can call you wherever you for are. Free. and Even it'll, if it'll be on landlines. Yeah, right, and it'll be totally for free. Absolutely. From their cell phone. Absolutely. From their cell phone, yep. it's not a long-distance call. So if you travel a lot, you can actually pack it in your suitcase, take it with you. Um, if I was overseas... So if I've activated this in Canada and I've gone overseas, now I can call home to Canada for free. Or the U.S. Or the U.S. Right. And they could vice versa. They could call you. And the, and the, the device thinks it's where, uh, it, where, it was where, it was, where it was activated with the, with the area code that's on it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. This is the world we're living in, folks. So you know, Cut the cord. Cutting the cord is so much easier when you can do stuff like this. And it's, uh, you're not tied down to any cord, any any internet connection you can take it in right all you need to do internet. is like we've got to, we you know plug it into the router or don't plug if you have the wi-fi device plug yeah. it in anywhere in your house you don't need the router you just set you know you just put your wi-fi settings uh into it just like you would your laptop so for me at home the NetTalk duo 2 is the right choice because i've got ethernet and i just plug it into the router and that's fine but what just struck me is if i was traveling some hotels will not have ethernet they'll be wi-fi only so, that so that's when you take the dot Duo Wi-Fi with you if you sense. want, and you can uh, use it, just plug it into your laptop, uh, and uh, away you go. Or you don't have to, do you? No. You could just connect it to their Wi-Fi. Oh, you yeah. connect it to the laptop. Well, you have to, to, set to up get the, the Wi-Fi. Wi to get the Wi-Fi, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then from there, it's standalone. Yep. Very cool. Yep. Um, so those are the devices, um, and uh, you know you've you've proven the the product, and it's been fantastic and reliable. Um, as you mentioned, it's about it was a fifty dollars per year, and I get all the yeah the renew from yeah the well the prices in Canada are We're um, here in Canada, so it's right a little less in the states. For so uh, the duo. The Duo sells uh, uh, for fifty nine ninety five. The Duo Two is forty four ninety five, and so the Duo Wi Fi is uh, seventy four ninety five. And that includes time and everything. So that includes your first year. Do you get uh, like voicemail, call display, voicemail, call display, call forwarding, call answer, all the bells and whistles that a normal telco company would give you are included in this device. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, so l let's move on from the devices because you guys have spent the last couple of years now revolutionizing your services uh we've we've all been quite concerned over the past you know a couple years about security and realizing that our privacy is not uh is is, is not real yeah and so you know even from my cell phone or my my phone i'm worried about um getting um intercepted messages, people sniffing my messages and things. So what is, uh, I understand NetTalk is working to improve the situation. Um, there are um, platforms like uh, BlackBerry comes to mind, mm -hmm. where I'm not really sure where they're going to be in five years. Mm -hmm. So what is NetTalk doing to step up and say, okay, here is something that we can offer that's going to well, keep got a, safe? Well, we've got a brand new Connect messaging app is a private secure fully encrypted uh, app it gives you added security um and so this uh, is this is um messaging like chat or like text messaging or yeah so that that that, that keeps your messaging very very secure you were talking about security so that, that, that yeah yeah 
my thinking now I was reading about this this service and it sounds like you've got uh, like a proxy set up and and uh, VPN tunneling from my phone to the proxy so that everything is absolutely encrypted and right. secure. Uh, so as I'm sending text messages from my phone app, so not through my phone itself through text messages through the, app. Through the NetTalk app, yeah. then I'm able to send it encrypted and it, it's going to be a lot safer than Ab- just sending it. Absolutely, cool. and uh, we've got another app uh, that I was. Uh, mentioning the Connect Talk app, yes. uh, that that app works with Wi-Fi LTE, 4G uh, LTE. Oh, okay. And and there's no roaming charges. Uh, you can. Uh, so this is actual phone calls, right? Through my phone. Through the app. Yep. So uh, if I install this app, can I make phone calls over Wi-Fi? Yes, absolutely. Wi-Fi, wow. uh, 3G, 4G, LTE. So what that means? It, see, I think about my cell phone. If I go over the border. I'm instantly paying roaming fees. Right. I'm instantly having to pay a huge long distance right. to call home. Right. With NetTalk, I can now... Download the app. And I, ha- I hate to sound like a tele... Like, I'm trying to get my head around this, uh, but you guys have been doing so much to, uh, to better the service and make it more accessible on, on the cell phone. So even without these devices, now I've got these apps to, to supplement. Right. Are they interconnected? Is my device at home going to be connected? Yeah, with all, my cell all phone? through all through one platform. Everything. Yeah, one platform covers the whole thing. Does the does the number on my cell phone stay the same, or how does that work? Um, I yeah, I believe so. Yes, and you get a, you get an app number as well. So the app itself has a separate phone number. That's yeah, a local call. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, what are the rest- what other services are you working on with NetTalk? We've I'm got uh, thinking about cell phones. Well, we've got a we've got a connect on 4G uh, SIM card yeah. that has to be. Uh, it's really good because it uh, it uh, allows you to um, uh, use your service. Uh, we've got. Is it you're bringing out SIM cards. Yep. Like a NetTalk SIM card. Yeah. It's a. It's well. It's not a. It's it's a SIM card. Connect on 4G. It's the nation's uh, fastest and lowest uh, cost nation 4G LTE network now available, and uh, it's uh, got a special price on it right now for twenty dollars a month for the first five months, uh, and then it goes to forty. And uh, sir, it's one plan, one price, so, no contract, okay, unlimited. I, I, yep. I, num- numbers don't matter to me because. Right? Okay. I'm gonna. I, I know. Oh, you guys are affordable. Twenty bucks, thirty yep. bucks for cell service. So you're talking. You can get a SIM card for my cell phone. That does it have the same sort of s- similar services to NetTalk? Or you, what what services come with that? Um, so it's unlimited talk, itself? text, and data. Unlimited. Yep. And no for additional. How much? No additional. Sorry. Talk. Now the numbers matter. Twenty dollars a month for the first five months, and then forty dollars uh, after that. Is the regular so price? So it's, it's forty a, it's, bucks a month. Right. So right now it's on special. Um, it has to be um, uh, activated in the United States. Okay. And it's good for Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, um, up to uh, ten gigabytes of data. And what happens after ten gigs? Uh, it, Does my phone stop accessing the internet? Or? No, no, not at all. Uh, I think it just uh, it'll it'll. Um, or do pr- I have to pay more? Uh, probably just pay more, but pretty much pretty hard to go to ten gigs. So I don't think that's a problem. Okay. So we've got LTE service unlimited up to 10 gigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's limited, but it's an affordable service. It's like 40 bucks uh, for that. So a SIM card allows me to now take a, uh, like a pay-as-you-go phone, and I can pop a SIM card into that yeah, phone you just need from an un- any provider. Yeah, you just need an unlocked phone. Um, it has to be activated in the United States, but yeah. it'll work on all those countries. So once it's activated in the U.S., it can be it can be used in any of the other countries. So you couldn't order it. On, really? a, a Canadian okay. can't order it online and, and have it delivered into Canada and activate it in Canada. It can't be activated in Canada first. It has to be activated in the United States. So the, the service is available here, but I have to get it activated down there. So right. I'd have to either travel to the states, right, or maybe it. send it to a relative. But maybe if you want to buy it, send it to a relative, have them activate okay? it for you, and it's then coming from the rep, right? So yeah. is that okay? Like, uh, do they frown on that? Um, I haven't heard any problems in doing no? that. And then have, cool. them, have them sent up here. How, I mean, unless you travel to the U.S. and buy it directly, right? 
So you can order it up here. Okay, so this, so we're speaking with Nelson Hudis from uh, from NetTalk, and NetTalk is a really great way to uh, replace your phone service. And we've talked about the home phone service and being able to cut the cord and and uh, and replace that with a device like this that's going to give you uh, full phone service at home uh, for Ethernet, extremely just cheap. Just plug in with the Ethernet cord, Perfect. plug it into the wall for yeah. power. Um, or plug it, you know. And now, speaking of cutting the cord, looking at our cell phone, and you're offering um, not just apps, but a SIM card that will actually provide our service. Right. So this must be third-party service providers. Yeah, it's, are... uh, it's using T-Mobile Network in the U.S. and okay. Bell, Rogers, and Telus in Canada. Okay, so all big-name uh, mobile uh, providers. So. Yep. Um, so, I mean, check them out. Uh, we can go to nettalk.ca uh, if you're in Canada. If you're in the United States, uh, is there more information about the uh, the cellular service in the States? I guess because that's where it's based. Yeah, so it's on, you can go to nettalk.com. Nettalk.com is the U.S. website. Nettalk.ca is the Canadian website for Canadians. Right. Okay, so check that out. Nettalk.com is where you want to go for if you're interested in the cell service. And if you're in Canada, nettalk.ca. Now, these devices are fantastic, and, and they do work very, very well. Uh, and so we want to um, offer our viewers an opportunity to, uh, to win some, uh, one of these. Um, so we've got a, a handful to give away. Absolutely. You can see them kind of surrounding me here. Yeah. Um, so we're going to give you various ways to win over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, certainly if you are a supporter on Patreon, you're going to be first up. And you've got a chance uh, with, with really good odds uh, there on Patreon right now uh, to pick up one of these NetTalk uh, devices. So which, which are we giving away? We're giving we're away the uh, NetTalk uh, Duo 2. The Duo 2. That's the one I've got. Okay. Right. And that has... Uh, uh, I believe in Canada we've got three months of service on that, and uh, great, 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 great product. So you get the device for free uh, f if you win, and get three months of free phone service activated in Canada or the U.S. Yep. And um, and then from there it's forty or forty dollars U.S. or fifty dollars Canadian if right. you want to. Uh, you know you evaluated the service and then you can give it a try for three months, and if you like it, uh, you I know can. You will. Yeah, you can uh, you can keep going. Cool. So, Patreon supporters, you're going to be first up on that. Uh, we're going to give you the information. Make sure you get, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash category5. What's next from, uh, from NetTalk? I mean, this is really exciting to see you branching into uh, the cellular market. Uh, because a l progressively more and more people are switching to their cell phones as their home phone. Yeah, the landline is. I mean, the landline is dead. If mm -hmm. it's, I mean, if it's if it's not totally dead yet, it probably will be pretty soon. <laughs> um, I, c you know, what's next? I can't give away all of our secrets, right, Robbie. Yeah. Come on, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the, you know, the uh, the fact that we're into the apps and the cell, you know, the the uh, the SIM card cellular service is uh, just an extension of what we do here with the devices. Very good. So check those out, uh, nettalk.ca in Canada or nettalk.com if you're in the United States. Uh, Nelson, it's always a pleasure to have you here. I uh, appreciate you making the trip to come and see us. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. And I encourage you to do uh, check out NetTalk. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks to our guests tonight, Nelson Hudis. Make sure you check them out at uh, nettalk.ca in Canada, nettalk.com if you are in the United States. Down Very below. cool stuff that they're doing. Uh, and don't forget, we are giving away some of those, so make sure you uh, check us out on Patreon, cat5.tv slash Patreon, mm -hmm. to be one of the first to qualify for that uh, for that draw. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do have a handful to give away, but uh, as, uh, as there are many few Fewer Patreon supporters than there are viewers. Yes. Your odds of winning on Patreon are much higher than once we open it up to all the viewers. Ah, okay. okay. So that's how that works. So make sure you check that out. Cat5.tv/patreon. And thanks to you, Shell, for being here. Thanks for being here, Robbie. I know, right? Here I am. <laughs> nice <laughs> to be for, here, as thanks always. Thanks for joining us every yeah, week. You know. Yeah, got to do something with my Tuesday night. I don't want to be bored. You, know? you just keep coming back. What else am I going to do? We love you for it. Yeah, so. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we love you for being here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we will catch you again next Tuesday night. Same place, same time. Have a great week. Good night. Arrivederci.